Yeah, Kaylee has a tough weekend ahead of him. He's supposed to be celebrating with some friends, yet there's the heaviness of losing a friend to an overdose also. Yeah, it's been pretty rough, man. Um, last week, and actually I don't pay attention to these Hol- these daily holidays, donut day, kiss your dog on the mouth day, all all these other, I don't even know if that's a real day. But, <laughs> but not my world, it's not. No, no, me neither. But um, I guess on August 31st was National um, Overdose Awareness Day. And I didn't even pay attention to that day until uh, September 1st when I got out of the show and I got a call from... My best friend, this, my best friend's sister, basically saying that my best friend Brian um, was found um, the night before and had overdosed mm. and died. So it's been a struggle with drugs for a long time, or is this something yeah. you've known about, or is his life kind of uh, just come out of nowhere? Because there are plenty of people that struggle with drugs that are CEOs, man, and you never know it. No, this didn't come out of anywhere. And if I had to be completely honest, when I heard, like. I'm and you never want to put something, you know, say that someone's not going to make it long into. I never want to, you know, put that into the atmosphere. Um, but I'm surprised he made it as long as he did. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, he's and I, Mo was talking about this last week because he had a tough week because I think it was um, one of his best friends. Like this, this was like my all time best friend. I've been rolling with this kid since. I was in sixth grade. I mean, like, we were pretty much inseparable through middle school, through what parts of high school we were in because we both dropped out. So, he, I mean, this guy was, uh, he's my best friend, you know. But over the years, he went, you know, he continued to go down a different road than I continued on, you know. Um, uh, So I, you know, formed a career where he could never really get one started. You know, and this is a guy that excelled in everything he did. I mean, anything he touched, he was good at. Uh, when we were younger, every girl wanted this guy. I mean, just a good looking, charismatic, just he was a great dude, but he was like a tortured soul, mm-hmm. you know. And it was like over the years, it was one of those things where I had to, you know, I had to kind of give him tough love because there were members of his family that wouldn't, you know. Um, and to even do paint a different backstory, you know, his dad drank himself to death when mm. he was like, I don't, I don't know how old he was, six, seven, something like that. And it's like one of those things. It's like you see that some people might see that and be like, I'm not going to end up like that. Like Bert, you've talked about, you know, how your dad, I think maybe treated women or you're like, I'm mm-hmm. not, or treated his kids, you, and I'm not going to do that with my kids. You know, um, or you follow in those same footsteps. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, now he leaves behind two daughters that are, I think, 15 and 14, which he hadn't oh, even God. seen Man. in over like 10 years. So I know that you guys kind of split in different directions a couple of years ago, you said. But um, was there anybody in the family healthy enough to reach out to him and say, dude, I mean, this is not going to end well, or have you just not been that close to know exactly the day-to-day? Well, I never, I wasn't as close to, as for the day-to-day, but, like, he lived, he, he's he been in Florida for the most part for the past 10 years, probably from halfway house to halfway house to jail to drug rehab, to, and he just... Dude, he, he like he just could never get it together. He just never could. And it's because he was sick, you know. Mm-hmm. But like um, I know his sister, who I've been speaking with more in the last week than I have in the last 15 years. Um, you know, she you know, she had to adopt that tough love because she's got kids mm-hmm. and it's, you know, um, his baby's mama, you know, wasn't letting him see the kids. But understandably she was protecting the kids you know and there was probably a lack of you know child support payments but but more even more than the money but you know you don't i see where she was coming from because you don't want you want to protect them you don't want that toxicity in their lives maybe the coming and going the letdowns the you know, uh, it's a tough road. I've had friends that are in this situation also where they've separated away, but there are kids involved and you're never quite sure 
how to handle it with the kids. Because when the kids are around, in this case, it was mom. She was a mess. And then, but they want to see mom. And they were quite a bit younger than what you're talking about also. And every single decision you make for the kids is always done out of love. But you're never quite sure it's the right decision, Mom. Yeah, man, just listening to you, uh, a lot of those feelings are coming back. When my best friend who passed, he passed the same way, and uh, his his dad had drinking issues, and he was same same thing. He was going through a lot for a very long time, and I was probably the hardest on him of everyone that was in his circle. And when when he passed, I blame myself for a long time. Like I just I just always wished I did more. It took me years to really learn that all you can do is all you can do. You know, when someone's in that kind of place. You're kind of limited in, in how much you can help. But I, I, I certainly know a piece of what you're going through. And um, I, all I do now is be there for his family and the people he left behind as much as I possibly can, you know. So what a strange weekend for you also, because you're supposed to be attending a wedding, right? So you're supposed to be celebrating with the one family, yet you're really feeling the heaviness of this. Yeah, so I leave after the show today. Um, my wife is the maid of honor in um, her best friend's now Thanks to COVID, very small, tiny, <laughs> 10 person, mm-hmm. just family, you know, private wedding, which it was supposed to be up over 100 people in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Um, the service for my friend is um, tomorrow, uh, it's Friday. So I will not be here. Um, I guess I never thought about this until, you know, th- this happened a week ago. But I guess in the days of pandemic where, I mean, I guess Zoom funerals or mm-hmm. services are probably, it's not, um, it's a thing, man. yeah, it's a thing. So mm-hmm. while I can't be there in person and they are having some in-person, um, you know, visitors, uh, I can join on the Zoom, you know, it's, yeah, it's just, I, I'm just, I'm kind of, you know, as Mo said, I'm not blaming myself. Uh, I did give him tough love. I just feel for his girls, man, that they didn't really get to speak to their dad. Of course. And what's even crazier is, uh, like, I think August 10th, he posted something on his Facebook saying, you know, to my daughters, if they read this, you know, I just want you to know, you know, I love you, basically. And he did, you know. So he almost knew that it was coming. I don't know, man. I I don't know. I mean, like, I talk to him, you know, once a month, every couple weeks, just Mm -hmm. depends. Maybe when he was feeling um, not depressed about maybe what he was had been doing, you know, he'd reach out. But, uh, you know, I just want his daughters to know he did love you. And don't be mad at mom because mom was just trying to protect you.